Good morning, buenos dias, and sabah al khair. It's really a great pleasure to be here today. And let me start by thanking Brianna for inviting me to be in front of such distinguished audience. It's really a privilege to discuss with you one of the very important topics, financial inclusion. The importance of financial inclusion is not only because it's a topic of economic efficiency. It's way more than that. It's a topic of morale, of equality, of inclusion, of humanity and dignity. So I will ask all of you to breathe, to relax, and please to close your eyes for a couple of seconds and imagine the tremendous achievements and advanced, uh, advancements that took place in our lives over 700 years. Seven centuries of overwhelming industrial uh, advancements, technological advancements, engineering, medical, you name it, 700 years. Now back with time and open your eyes. 700 years ago, almost the first prominent official comprehensive bank started its working in Italy in the middle of Florence, Medici Bank. 700 years, huge and tremendous advancements in the banking industry took place, though with the first time of global FinDEX uh, came out in 2012, revealing the data of 2011, we found out that the banks failed people. Only 51% of the adults all over the world were financially included. So imagine, imagine with the brilliant names of the largest banks operating over the last, I remember because I started working for the Central Bank of Jordan 35 years ago, so I remember the names and I was always like, wow, I'm dealing with this bank and this bank, though they failed the adults. The problem is most of those who are excluded are women, the poorest, the youth, and the forcibly displaced people. So starting from there, at the Central Bank of Jordan and Jordan as a national government, we wanted to really take our responsibilities towards the excluded people. But first, let me introduce you to Jordan in numbers. Jordan's population, according to the latest consensus, is slightly above 3.3 million population. And let me tell you, we imported most of them because almost 27% out of the 11 million are uh, refugees. And most of the refugees are Syrian refugees due to the uh, huge influx of refugees that took place in Jordan in 2012 and 2013. And Jordan is one of the youngest population in the world, with 63% of the population below the age of 30. Financial inclusion rate, when we started in 2011, it was 24%, then 2014, 24.6%. But now, according to the latest one for 2021, we're 47%, definitely, there is always advantage for men over women in mostly all of the aspects of life, including access to financial services. And who serve these people? 20 banks operating in the country, eight mobile payment service providers, three non-bank acquirers, and the uh, GDP of Jordan is around 48 billion US dollars. Jordan is considered one of the middle income 
countries, the upper uh, side of the middle income countries. But let me give you something. When we had the first FINDEX in 2011, and it was 24.6% of the overall population of 7 million. At that time, we had 24 banks operating in the country and no uh, payment service providers. When we saw the numbers in 2012, the governor called for a high-level steering committee. And he told me, Maha, are you stupid? No way to be uh, only 24% banked. We are overbanked. We have 24 banks serving uh, the adults of 7 million people, and they are all profitable, so no way. We don't have this, these blue-eye uh, consultants and advisors. They don't know the context of Jordan. But it was really more than that. It was about broadening financial services, or affordable financial services, to all people deepening the financial services to those who have the minimum of financial services, and most of all, expanding protection, literacy. And for me, one of the very critical things was reducing the transaction cost and make it for, uh, more affordable to people from there, as Jordan is a poor country in resources, though it's one of the richest when it comes to generosity, to uh, 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 the being very kind, to being very human-oriented, to being the real person who are, so we took the responsibilities and we started our journey towards comprehensive access to formal financial services in a very responsible and ethical manner. And in less than 10 years, because the official first financial inclusion strategy started 2018 till 2021, though, uh, honestly, we started before that, we almost doubled the, uh, num the percentage of inclusion from 24.6 to 47.1. But when it comes to payments, and I will tackle on that, we raised it from 3.5% in 2011 to 40% in 2021, and that was really significant to all people and to the economy. But still, we are really in a position that we are required to do much more and to keep the pace even more than that. I will not discuss with you the whole journey and the, everything we've conducted or done to solve the financial exclusion problem. I wanted to focus on two pillars of our strategies that started in 2018. Afterwards, we kept in our mind and focus the target that we are responsible to serve, always. And how, the most important approach of how to serve them. I will start by the segments. It always included women, refugees, youth, the poorest, and the MSMEs. But for the sake of today, I will focus on the most too vulnerable, in my perspective, who needs the most, because when I talk about women and refugees, they are very vulnerable, and we, now we can see many countries, even among people here, they are hosting communities for many of the refugees or forcibly displaced people, so this is very important. Within refugees and women, we have youth, we have uh, uh, both genders, etc. So I will be discussing more about women and refugees. For women, and uh, you know, the FINDEX, it includes all population, all people living in the country. So it includes uh, yeah, all the, the uh, refugees. We succeeded in reducing the gender gap from 53% in 2017 to 32% in 2021, and that was really significant because it required us to double our efforts. We wanted to expand and to enhance the financial inclusion for, all, for both genders, but we had to put double efforts in order to reduce the gap, and this is very apparent, for which we implemented different techniques and approaches. One of them, due to social norms in Jordan, many of Jordanian women or uh, refugees, they are reluctant as female to share sensitive data, names, mobile numbers with male uh, agents. So we created a nationwide female 
e-money agents across the country. And this is a photo of one of the female agents with Queen, Maxi uh, Queen Maxima of Netherlands. More than that, we started to create female digital champions from their communities, either refugee communities, the poorest communities, people living in remote areas communities, youth communities, and you can see the three digital champions here. This one, she represents youth, and this one represents the refugee, and this one represents the poorest. So we created a network of female digital champions to become trainers, to become influencers in their communities, agents, so they understand their language, they can feel and sense the same needs that and heartbeats. So maybe for me, if I live within a camp to, uh, trying to figure out what they need, I will not be the right person, could be someone from their community. And we conducted definitely several awareness programs, literacy specialized for them in their communities, and outreach programs to really, for example, with Arab Women Enterprise Funds and others trying to do many of the things for the community and for women. I thought I, uh, I'm done. For refugees, I'm really honored and feel so proud being Jordanian as Jordan was, and this is by the way me. <laughs> Jordan was the first country and Central Bank of Jordan the first central bank in the world to make official announcements and commitments towards refugees to provide them with access to formal financial services back to 2011, uh, uh, sorry, 16. And Jordan was the first country in the world to implement innovative biometric iris to validate the customers, the refugees, to uh, very, uh, validate them, to conduct Know Your Customers, even to conduct purchases at the point of sale, for example, with World Food Program or with any other uh, merchants that accepts payments using the IRIS. Digital experiments, so this is very important and I love always to share it with audiences because as we know, poor people, women, refugees, etc., youth, they tend to need specific products and services. It's not something like on the shelf, we take it one size fits all. So before doing anything and perceive that we know more than them and this is the best solution we need to implement, so we conduct a, a digital intervention or digital experiments. It's a kind of intervention regardless of what. Any new enhancements or improvements on what we provide Instead of putting huge investments and waste time to, to do it at a larger scale, we conduct experiments using, for example, control group with other group or before and after. We analyze the results and we disseminate knowledge on what is recommended in the market for the uh, private sector to do or, and what is not recommended as it, uh, it is a failure from our side. And we work closely with UNHCR and other humanitarian agencies. We made all payments, all human uh, humanitarian cash assistance. Instead of cash, they became digital. And let me tell you something. After that, we tried to assess the impact of this in Jordan. It counted to be over 20 hours of saving time for the refugees to collect the cash assistance because they collect from UNSCRs, they collect vouchers and other coupons from World Food Program. The moment we made it all digital, we saved them on average per month, per person, 20 hours, which is significant and very important for them. And definitely training as well for the refugees in their camps, within their communities, especially for them so they don't feel intimidated be, being at, at, in the same place with Jordanian women, could they, uh, they perceive they know more or whatsoever. On the house, so I discussed two who's targeted, and now the house. Maybe you all know that over decades, most of governments and central banks started to inject in the market 
microfinancial institutions, trying to mandate that, trying to enforce having these micro loans to a specific segment of the society, and they failed. Compared to the efforts they put and the money and the investments, the results were not like up to the standards. And many of the banks and central banks tried to incentivize saving accounts by lottery, by rewards, etc. And it did not yield what was expected. It's, it's evident. Uh, after 700 years, only 50% uh, of the uh, world's population are banked. So, I started with digital payments as the digital frontier, as the first digital frontier. Every day, we make payments and we receive payments. Not every day we receive, but every day we do, we make payments. <laughs> Maybe only when we receive the salary. It's the only uh, MS, uh, SMS I receive from the bank that there is money in your account. Anyway, so people, they pay and they, get, uh, they receive payments. So this is the right place where we should start in Jordan. And for me, payments is two sides of the coin. It's the service of payment and the function of payments, the movement of funds. So even if I want to do something digitally for lending, financing, microfinancing, I prefer to do it leveraging on the digital rails that move funds in a safe, secured way. So this is, we are in the right place with the ILF talking about payments. So, payments should be full interoperable, we believe in that, so we started by that, then I will talk about the other areas. This is the digital payments landscape in Jordan. We have electronic check clearing system because our community and commercial businesses, they rely heavily on checks still. Jomo Pay, Jordan Mobile Payment Switch, I am honored to as well to say that our payment switch, mobile payment switch, was the first in the world as full interoperable, and we worked closely with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for Level 1 project to ensure that we have something for the common, for the whole world. It ensured interoperability among all wallet providers. Then e 4 con national payment switch that connects now, as of today, over 1,800 billers from government utilities, uh, schools, universities, etc. Definitely all card schemas, not only Master and Visa. The automated the clearing house for both credit transfers and direct debits. They serve mostly corporates and retail payments. Click, the last one launched in 2020 during uh, the pandemic. It's full interoperable payment system for all bank accounts and definitely the whole value payment system, the RTGS, all uh, payments, they settle their net clearing into the central bank money at the RTGS. But how they are interoperable. Jomo Pay as a wallet, they all interoperate with each other, and the click, all banks interoperate with each other. Uh, end of 2021, we integrated them, so now in Jordan, all wallets and banks interoperate easily. With EFO at Tircom from wallets or, ba or bank accounts, you can pay over uh, 1,800 different bills. They are interoperable. The three of them are instant, and they interoperate with the ATM. So if you go to any ATM, you can pay bills. You can cash in, cash out from wallets or bank accounts without the using of card, cardless. And the same for point of sales. So point of sale, you can pay uh, bills, you can transact from your wallet, or you can transact from click cardless transactions in addition to cards. And this one was very important because we wanted to start injecting or integrating with microfinancial institutions to benefit from this ecosystem. We wanted to make it available for people to receive the loans digitally and to pay the installments digitally. So we integrated microfinancial institutions with EFO, Tircom, and with Jomo Pay and Click. As for the money transfer operators, we, till this moment, I don't believe we should uh, integrate with them directly, but what we did, we digitalized the front end of the service through their agents. It's using your mobile uh, application. You can send money and receive, but it's the relationship between myself and the Jordanian agent who conducts the other side of the transaction through them. As for the Arab regional uh, payment system, 
uh, with the Arab Monetary Fund, we are till this moment trying to integrate with them to ensure at least cross-border instant cross-border remittances within the region, although this will only help, if we succeed in doing that, it will only help us within the Arab region and most, the most important corridor in Jordan for inward payments, for example, for the refugees is Germany. The most important outward Okay, is uh, Egypt, then Philippines, and now India. So it doesn't cover the needs of the kingdom. The second how, to keep on innovating. It's not only providing national systems. It's the continuous uh, process of innovating several uh, functions and uh, products within the systems by implementing, for example, a QR code, NFC to make it more like easier, and providing customers with different options. You can use your card, you can use your Apple uh, uh, app, you can use uh, uh, Click Pay, you can use Jomo Pay Pay, you can use whatever you want, request to payment and payee confirmation, credit confirmation, many other innovations to uh, make more options for people. And believe me, the more options we provide people, the more resilient we put them in a better situation. Because with options and choices, resilient will definitely be there. This one is very critical to all countries, including Jordan. We all know that one of the main impediments for uh, financial inclusion for banks is transaction cost. Because this segment of the most vulnerable, the ticket size is relatively small. So if you want to impose fixed costs or fixed fees over a small uh, transaction, this is like significant and costly for them. That's one of the reasons why banks uh, previously, they were reluctant to provide services for such people. So we needed in Jordan, to bring the transaction cost down significantly. How to do that? We, con we contracted with Ernest and Young to conduct a full research in the country to figure out what's the cost of transaction, uh, of cash transactions in Jordan. For example, for passive shadow economy, which is only this passive shadow, is because my preference is to pay in cash. Or the only option I have is to pay in cash. Nothing related to tax evasion or etc. So only that. In Jordan, it's 9.6% of GDP. This is quite very huge. If we look at the absolute amount of the cost of transacting in cash, it's $350 per annum per person. This is quite significant for any country. What about a poor country in uh, financial resources and natural resources. So we wanted to promote the digital payments to reduce this, bringing down the transaction cost down. Another one, we know that with technological advancements in production, it caused economic prosperity and growth, right? But technological advancements, it's not only peculiar to production. It's more about processes. It requires re-engineering the processes. It's not automation, it's digital transformation. That brought transaction costs down significantly, and we succeeded. The more we promote digital payments, the more we can bring transaction costs down, and we implemented uh, FinTech solutions, not only we didn't procure our systems from the large, uh, prominent uh, companies. We partnered with national fintech companies because they are like frog, like a rabbit, compared to the banks that are huge elephants. So the associated costs with fintech is lower in terms of time, efficiency, and, uh, tr and cost. And the digital infrastructure. When we started working on payments, it wasn't like because it was the hype or the buzzword. It was because at that time, the digital readiness in Jordan was quite, uh, quite uh, high in terms of data, uh, access to internet, access to smartphones, access to mobile. So we capitalized on that to try to bring most of the digital payments options into the device that most of the people have, 
with most of the people have access to internet, so we leverage on that, bringing the transaction costs significantly, making the, many of the digital payment solutions costs very affordable to the most vulnerable people, to uh, refugees, to women, to youth in the country. That's what caused 3.5% increase to 40% increase in digital payments in the country. Liquidity and uh, usage. We don't want people to receive money then to need to cash out. I wish if I live in a world where I don't need to hold a single banknote or coin. So the more I can use and recycle my digital money into more of digital usages, the transaction cost at large on the economy and people will be down, definitely. So we are still working heavily on e-commerce with digital payments, with all options of open payments, and more innovative approaches for merchant acceptance, all types of merchants. And here in uh, uh, Costa Rica, I found that the smallest uh, merchants, they accept digitally. And what made me so happy to see many of you when I did this tour with many of you, like creating more of options for digital usages, digital liquidity. This is great and we look forward to working with you in the future or working with people like you in the future in our countries. So wishing you all the, uh, all the best in your expansion outside your countries. Uh, Brianna always kept on asking me how the banks in Jordan took that with the, whole, with the challenges they are facing. Definitely we have several stakeholders, but I will be like focusing on the banks. We know that banks, they see this segment not feasible, not profitable. Uh, it's not easy to serve them outside in their remote areas. Uh, they are perceived as riskier. They are perceived as uh, not uh, fully uh, uh, monitored and uh, tracked for compliance. Uh, many of the areas they, they need more of financial literacy. Central Bank of Jordan allowed them to implement and to adopt different approaches like uh, branchless banking, agent banking, more uh, options of digital channels, outsourcing part of the services, uh, serving them remotely uh, with uh, Know Your Customer. This is where we now use digital identities. For example, uh, perceived higher risk. Definitely, I don't know this customer. I have no data about this customer. He lives in a very remote area, so how can I... Uh, conducted due diligence, so now we have access to more data uh, with the approval of the government to open data. So many of the things took place, but this one is like the most important here, the collaboration and partnership. We were like uh, lucky and blessed to have one of the best banking sector in Jordan in terms of not the implementation, in terms of how they see their responsibilities toward the country. So we gathered our efforts, Central Bank of Jordan and all banks in the country, and formed JOPAC, Jordan Payments and Clearing Company, with a vision to promote digital financial services as the main driver towards digital financial inclusion and digital economy. And definitely, the main objectives is to provide very comprehensive and innovative financial services to all, not to specific people, so to all people and enterprises, towards a financial or uh, digital economy as well. What do we do? We operate micro and retail payment system and we are the clearing house. We introduce uh, innovative digital financial services. We enable FinTech by partnering with them and by incubating them. And we are a knowledge hub in that area of digital financial services. For the future, what we want to do as JOPAC, for the uh, short term and maybe medium term future, we will keep on working towards higher financial inclusion uh, ratio from 47, hopefully uh, be, uh, way above that, by increasing usages and innovations and access. Uh, we are still uh, uh, persistent and determined to drag the transaction costs lower by improving efficiency and introducing 
more of innovative products tailored according to not people only, also MSMEs and others, and to introduce innovative consumer protection solution where we work closely with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Mojaloub, to try to find one of the things, very innovative fraud detection and prevention solutions and how to serve the customers in an innovative way. This is the most important part. <coughs> We would love to have more of open payments for e-commerce and others, and we look forward to get the assistance from Arnie, Ernie and from the ILF, as well as for instant cross-border payments, because I made it very clear, and yesterday my colleague Layana on the session, she made it clear that either spaghetti integration or like single integration bilateral with different hubs and different regions, it will lead us to a very messy world, but we needed something like sending money as simple as sending an email. And we have a, a, a hope that we can integrate our digital identity and onboarding EKYC system implemented in Jordan. We made it try to make it up to high standards so we can integrate with the region because we have many of the uh, uh, expats working in the country from the region, so we want to validate their identities with their federal agencies. The same for Jordanians working outside. That's a hope maybe we can expand it in the future beyond even the region. For green financing and ESG, still Jordan, we have some policies in this regard, but we are way behind innovative approaches towards that, and this is something we all hold the responsibility towards an innovative rec tech solution. I wish I can see uh, from you and from those cohorts graduated from ILF or grantees that we can rely on such uh, innovative solution to reduce the compliance and regulatory costs. Yesterday, also, I think Cheryl was talking about this huge cost. We want to drag it down by innovation to supervise innovation. And a globe, oh, sorry, this is uh, on the tagline. And about fintech. So to make it easier for the banks who became partner with us to support all financial inclusion, now we brought them together with us to support fintech ideas and fintech implementation. We uh, came out with the program called Join Fincubator. By the way, Join, it's the first two words of Jordan. IN innovation, at the same time, it's, um, uh, it's like uh, invitation for action. So join our FinTech incubator, join FinCubator. We follow this strategic uh, star where we provide the cohorts and entrepreneurs with access to infrastructure, whether it's physical or digital infrastructure access to expertise, name the expertise if they need in legal, marketing, consumer protection, AML, CFT, UI, UX, API strategies, and access to partnership. Either we work in some areas like Mozart, that we integrate fintechs with the banks, if they require that, and believe me, we are making everything for free, except when it is like commercial, we at least cover our costs and access to markets once they uh, implement within our incubation, where they experiment, they experiment with the regulatory sandbox, then access to market will be in a shorter time, and we started working with other countries to ensure bridging and passporting to other countries. Access to finance, we don't provide any grants. We're considered like, although we're supported by banks, but limited uh, capabilities to do that. We don't uh, have any equity in these startups because we don't want to share them with any potential increase in their value. We just want to serve them in order to serve our country. And we target startups, financial institutions, academies. I'm about to finish, so I will talk about academies. One of our commitment is to reduce the gap between academic outcomes and what the market needs and the challenges in the market. So we work closely with the universities in the country 
for challenges, for hackathons, and even for specific courses every semester in uh, different universities uh, around the kingdom to provide the students with like um, a broadened uh, mind how to see things, how to start while they are uh, in the universities to start thinking about finding innovative solutions for specific pro problems in the country and for the region. If we exclude the Gulf, who are very rich, who have maybe 70, if 90% of the population are expats from different countries, so they don't have that major financial inclusion problem. But other than that, we uh, work uh, closely in collaboration with Egypt, Lebanon, Morocco, uh, Iraq, uh, our dearest uh, uh, Palestine. We work with Tunisia, Algeria, so many other countries. Uh, Sudan, we try to bring the region in some harmony where we can deal together, where we can cooperate, and I wish to have more open uh, spaces and areas for collaboration with the ILF, either for Jordan or for the region, where we will be more than honored to help and to cooperate with you.